Hello, my friends. Welcome to my clinic review family. So glad you're here. We hope you've enjoyed watching some of our other videos. This is our farm video number six. So if you haven't watched the first five, you don't have to watch them before you watch this, but you might want to watch the other ones. This is covering the list of 50 essential meds that you should know for NCLEX. There's a few more that you should know, but this is really the uh, 50 essential ones. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And if you don't know about us, we are the best in my opinion, NCLEX review business in the world. And we do both online and in-person reviews. So go ahead and check us out at clinicreviews.com. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let me make this a little bigger because the print is sort of smaller. You're discharging a client with a new prescription for, for budesonide and for motorol inhaler. Which of the following statements indicates the teaching has been effective? Now, just a tip, if you get a medication, you don't know what it is, but there's two medications it combined. A lot of a lot of drugs are two medications combined. Like the, the trade will be one name, but then you look at the generics and you can see it's actually two meds. Like Percocet is oxycodone acetaminophen. It's actually two meds combined. This is one of those inhalers. If you saw the trade, you'd go, oh, it's just one med, but then you look at it and you can see it's two meds combined. When you see two meds combined, I would look for an answer that acknowledges there's two meds in this in this inhaler. That's what I would look for, okay? All right, now you might say, well, how did I know it was an inhaler? Well, because it says inhaler in it, okay? That's how we knew it was an inhaler. Number one, I will need to use this inhaler whenever I have an upper respiratory infection so it doesn't move to my lungs, okay? Maybe. I will take this inhaler every day during allergy season so I don't experience coughing and nasal drainage. Maybe, but I don't like nasal drainage because it's an inhaler. It's not for the nose. So I, I'm thinking I'm going to rule that one out. I will take this inhaler every day since one of the medicines opens my airway and the other decreases swelling. I like that one a lot. I will use this inhaler every day since one of these meds rapidly opens my airways and the other keeps them open for a long time. All right. I like that. All right, so I am going to go with either three or four. That's what I'm going to go with because the other two don't acknowledge there's two. So let's see what we've got. I will take this inhaler every day since one of the medicines opens my airways and the other one decreases swelling. All right, so for Motorol, whenever you see Aral, like think of Albuterol. Uh, when I see that, other than Albuterol is the only short acting bronchodilator, but the um, for for it's for I always say for Meterol, but it's for Motorol. Salmeterol, um, these are long acting bronchodilators. So I'm thinking that's a long acting bronchodilator. So it says one of them opens my airways. I like that. The other decreases swelling, budesonide. Well, I may say, well, I don't really know what that is, but I do know they can take inhaled steroids. And I know inhale is a common medication that's inhaled, right? I know the short acting bronchodilators, long acting bronchodilators, inhaled steroids. Those are the most commonly inhaled type of uh, inhalers for allergies and uh, different types of things. So I like answer number three. And then four, I will use this inhaler every day since one of these meds rapidly opens my airways and the other one keeps them open for a long time. All right. I know albuterol is the only one that rapidly opens the airways and that's not albuterol. Y'all, albuterol is albuterol. There's no other name for albuterol. Okay. It has to say albuterol. Otherwise it's not rapidly opening the airways. So the only one that makes any sense to me is number three. And that's in fact the correct answer. This is a combination long acting bronchodilator and corticosteroid. So remember the, th the things that I told you, I suppose you can try to memorize this, but if you remember the, the all ending for an inhaler and albuterol, and this is a all ending, that's an, that's a, a bronchodilator. Albuterol is the only short acting. All the others are long acting. And then the other common type of uh, inhaler is a steroid, which it decreases swelling, which is why they take it. So, all right, let's move on. If you're getting ready to hang vancomycin IV for your patient with C. diff, your patient tells you he's feeling dizzy and he has ringing in his ears. What is your best response? Check his vital signs. Okay, maybe. Hold the med and call the doctor. Okay, maybe. Give the med, but run it in at a slower rate. Oh, maybe. Hold the med for two hours until he's feeling better, then give the med. All right, four, I would cross off. That's not something I typically do. And when I, if I'm guessing, I'm not picking the one that I don't typically do. Okay. So I think one, two, and three are things I typically could do. So I'm crossing off four. So now the question is, what is the best answer? So what I'm going to tell you right now is really something you just need to learn. All right. So the mycins, antibiotics that end in mycin, antibiotics that end in mycin, they're mean old mycins. Think of them as mean old mycins. They're mean. 
and they end in mycin. <laughs> okay. They're mean and they end in mice. Now this is something we teach in clinic reviews. We teach it more in depth. It's this super superficial, super superficial. This is superficial, but I'm giving you just a little heads up about what we teach in, in uh, clinic reviews. So the mean old mycins are used to treat really severe infections. And what you have to remember is you think mice, 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 and mice. Well, what do we think of the world's most famous mouse? Who's the world's most famous mouse? Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. And what is the most obvious physical feature on Mickey Mouse? His ears, right? His ears. So when you think mice for mice and think ears for Mickey Mouse, and one of the adverse effects or toxic effects of the menomycins is ear problems, loss of hearing, dizziness, ringing in the ears. Okay. So this is an ad, it's a toxic effect. It's not a side effect y'all. And in some of the other videos, many of the other videos I've done, I've talked with you about side effects versus adverse or toxic effects. Toxic effects, we stop the med for, we call the doctor. Side effects, we don't call the doctor, we don't hold the drug, don't hold the med. So this is a toxic effect, mycin, remember, menomycins, mice, ringing in the ears, okay? So that means I'm going to hold the med and call the doctor. This is not a side effect. It's an adverse effect. I want to hold the med and call the doctor. And that's just generally true what we do for adverse or toxic effects. If they tell you they're having an adverse or toxic effect, you hold the med and call the doctor. And you might say, well, how do I know if it's an adverse or toxic effect? Well, sometimes you got to memorize it. But if you're like, I have no idea. Well, is it is it serious? Like, are they having a rash and difficulty breathing? That sounds like an adverse effect. Do they just have a headache? That's more of a, that's more of a side effect. Some diarrhea, that's more of a side effect, right? So um, you kind of have to think generally when you think about this. But for menomycins, telling you what, ringing in the ears, dizziness, ototoxicity, um, tinnitus. Anybody know how to say that word right? I don't. Tinnitus, tinnitus. Anyway, 28, you're caring for a patient coast corn, coronary artery stent placement. She's been prescribed clopidogrel. She's already taking aspirin. What is your response? Look, if you don't know what clopidogrel is, clopidogrel is Plavix. Plavix. You got to know this one. You just have to memorize it, y'all. Clopidogrel is Plavix. I call it a super aspirin. We give it all the time. Very, very common. I call it a super aspirin. So the question is, can you take it together with aspirin? And the answer is yes. You can take a super aspirin and an aspirin. A lot of times they do it. I'm not sure why they add aspirin onto the clopidogrel regimen but they do very common after any kind of atherosclerotic or artery issue, um, whether it's peripheral vascular or central vascular in the heart or in the periphery, clopidogrel is common. So call the healthcare provider and question the order. No. Give the clopidogrel, but hold the aspirin. No. Give both meds. They're compatible. Absolutely. Give the aspirin, but hold the clopidogrel to give later in the day. No. Okay. All right, next question. Which of the following are proton pump inhibitors? Select all that apply. All right, I put this one on here on purpose because I have found there are a couple different types of drugs that end in Zol. I always used to think Zol is a protein pump inhibitor. So when I see these, I go Donepazil. Okay, that doesn't sound like a proton pump inhibitor to me. Osemeprazole, Prazole, right? Prazole, I go, well, Prazole, yeah. Those prazoles are proton pump inhibitors, Ozep osimeprazole. So I'm going, yeah, for that one. Aripiprazole, hmm, maybe that's a prazole. Pantoprazole, that one I know. That's protonics, right? Pantoprazole, protonics. So I know that one's a PPI. Metronidazole, well, that's not a prazole, but it's still a zole. Sildenafil, no sildenafil, absolutely not. So I'm crossing off one in six for sure. Now I'm going to go ahead and go with the prazole. So I'm going to cross off metronidazole. Metronidazole, I'm pretty sure is flagyl. That's an antibiotic. So that's not a proton pump inhibitor. So I'm crossing off five. I crossed off one. I crossed off six. Now I have to say osomeprazole oh, and pantoprazole are PPIs. How about the aripiprazole? So this is a what do they call it? It's not a second gen. It's called an atypical antipsychotic. What I found is atypical. These are new psych drugs. They're new drugs for schizophrenia and mania. They end in prazole. And I have no idea why I tried to figure out. I'm like, are they similar to the Elsa Osimeprazole? What's going on? Why do these, why does it end in that? So what I'm telling you is you just have to memorize this. Aripiprazole, Aripiprazole, even though it sounds the same, is an antipsychotic. 
So the only proton pump inhibitors are esomeprazole and pantoprazole. Those are the only ones. So donepazil is uh, for dementia. Uh, aripiprazole is abilify. It's an atypical antipsychotic. Metronidazole is flagyl. And sildenafil is Viagra. Now, I'm hoping if you go over these often enough, you're going to start to remember them. So please feel free to watch this video a few times. You're caring for a client taking risperidone. Which of the following statements indicates your teaching has been effective? Select all that apply. Risperidone. All right, let's see what we got here. I'll tell my spouse I can no longer go to the beach. I will tell my doctor if I get a cold, I will stop eating green leafy vegetables. I will no longer be able to get the flu shot. I will get my blood checked every two weeks. All right. So I guess this is one I, I, I'm thinking it's a, like if I were guessing, I would be thinking it was a psych drug, um, but, and it is a psych drug. It's an atypical antipsychotic. Y'all, risperidone is an atypical antipsychotic. Just like the aripiprazole, the last one, aripiprazole and risperidone. Those are the two atypical antipsychotics you got to know. Atypical antipsychotics have anticholinergic side effects, but particularly they have issues with um, agranulocytosis. Agranulocytosis is low white count. So the atypical antipsychotics, you're going to have to be very concerned about low white count. So I'm going to go ahead and check five because I'm sure that one's right. Now, I will no longer be able to get the flu shot. That is false. In fact, I don't know of anything you can have that does not allow you to get the flu shot. So number four, I would say is generally never true. With very, I mean, I can't even think of an exception. And since the NCLEX tests on general principles, not exceptions, I'm not picking four. It is as I don't I, even when you're pregnant and breastfeeding, you get the flu shot. I mean, if you can get it when you're pregnant and breastfeeding, like you can get it any time. Okay, so I'm not picking four. I will stop eating green leafy vegetables. So that is true for um, that is true for warfarin, coumadin, but not for it's not an anticholinergic effect. It's not anything to do with psych meds. Green leafy vegetables have nothing to do with psych meds. It's only warfarin. So I'm crossing that off. I'll tell my doctor if I get a cold. Well, if their risk is low white count, then I better tell the doctor if I get a cold. That seems like a good idea. If, they're, if a granulocytosis is a risk, I better have them do that. Number one, I'll tell my spouse I can no longer go to the beach. Well, I can't think of any reason somebody can't go to the beach. Now, one of the possible side effects of many psych drugs is sun sensitivity. That doesn't mean their eyes can't handle the sun. It means their skin. So psych drugs, I generally always teach people wear sunscreen or long sleeve shirts or hats, but I don't tell them they can't go to the beach. I mean, go to the beach and sit on, you know, wear sunscreen, sit under the umbrella, wear a hat, whatever. But I don't say you cannot go to the beach. That's too extreme. Okay. So risperidone, which is an atypical antipsychotic, you could call it second gen if you want to. But what I really want you to remember about this is that they're at risk for agranulocytosis, which is low white count. So you got to tell the doctor, so I'm supposed to say my doctor, if I get a cold, and I'll get my blood checked every two weeks. So that's the correct answer, okay? All right, so that's the end of this today's uh, five-question video. Um, look for our next one coming out here soon. And and uh, thank you for your support, y'all. Seriously, we are over 25,000 subscribers in less than six months. That's phenomenal. We're excited, super excited. I hope this is helping you, and we wish you all the best. We love you here at Clinic Reviews, and we'll see you later.